the Chase Thomas Podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. I'm cautiously optimistic. Like everyone's talking about the schedule this year with mm-hmm. Florida. I think Graham Merch is going to have a really good season. I think Eugene Wilson the third is a really, really good player. I think he's going to have a breakout year if he can stay healthy. I think Montreal will be one of the better backs in the SEC and not having to split time with ETN. I think we'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I'm not that I think people are really overlooking them because of the schedule. Like I just I would pick them right now against Miami at home to start the year. I think Miami's gonna be a sexy pick. I'm like, I believe when I see it. Like it's just really hard to win in the swamp and my Mario Crystal Ball in a big game out of the gate. Like I let me see it. I wouldn't be surprised at yeah, one, but let's sure. just see it. Yeah. But there's a strong chance Florida is undefeated going into Knoxville, and I'm gonna just not be well all week long. And I think people are overthinking Florida a little bit. I think people are like three and nine. I understand the Vegas win total. Yeah. Are you talking yourself into Florida? Because I think seven and five is actually more realistic to me than a three and nine type year. No, I I think so. I think there is a weird split happening right now. And this is just anecdotal. I think there's the three and nine crowd. I think that crowd Mm. tends to be a little bit more national than Florida fans. But I think there Mm. are Florida fans who are like, no, like this is not working. We should have made a change already we're doomed. Um, I think there's another group of Florida fans that are maybe even a little bit more optimistic than you are that are Mm -hmm. maybe thinking like, we're not going to go to the sec title game. We're not going to be Georgia, but like we can win eight games in the regular season. We can maybe push for nine. Like, I think they look at the schedule and they say like, we should beat Kentucky. We should be, um, Ole Miss. Like whether or not these things are true, they look at last year and they say, you know, Florida state almost with, with a total, with a total like shell of a team, Florida nearly beat Florida state last year. So why can't we do it this year? Now that Florida state's lost all this talent, I think there is a different path where they sort of say, okay, nine and three is on the table. The middle path that you're identifying is the one that I don't think anybody knows what to do with, because Mm -hmm. if Billy Napier wins eight or nine games with this schedule, I think he's fine. I think he's totally fine. If he loses nine games with this schedule, I think he's done. Like, I think we're just, that that's not going to work. Yeah. If you go five and seven, if anywhere between five and seven and seven and five, I think you get into that weird, well, who did you beat and how did you beat them? Because the problem with the schedule to me is not necessarily the difficulty of it. Cause last year was pretty similar in that regard. It's the order of it. You like, you are mm-hmm. right that Florida could be, undefeated entering the Tennessee game. Florida could, because the Tennessee game is weird, leave Knoxville six and oh. Yeah. And and then they could drop every other game on the schedule after that. And that's I think what kills you is that sense that there is no momentum and that Mm -hmm. I think weirdly you're better off going from getting to six and six from well we started the year two and four but we closed strong then yeah. we started the year five and one, and then we collapsed down the stretch. And that's, I think, the problem that they have from this, from a scheduling standpoint. It's just the messaging is going to be weird. That's what helped Shane Beamer so much was Beamer yes. beating Tennessee and Clemson back to back to close yes. the year, even though the year was awful. Yes. And they just had his great year. And then it's it, bottom time. Like yes. it was just such a great, the vibes have never been higher in Columbia. Yes. And that, that wasn't real. That was a little blip in the radar. And it was, <laughs> all right. Like, I actually think they're going to be pretty bad this year. I think they're going to be like three and nine. I think, I think they're, I think they're going to adjust. I think they're going to have to adjust in a very real way. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think most. What do most, Florida fans want though? Do they want to, this uh, all to work out with Napier I, and everything I, else? Or are they I ready think, to move on? I think. I, if I were to guess, I think 80 to 90% want him to work because okay. I don't think there is a clear, well, we'll just go th- get this person. Not Jed fish. I don't, I don't know why that would be the answer at this point. Like, well, isn't it like his dream job apparently? Sure. Apparently? And yeah. Arizona was great last year, but like, I would like to see what happens af- with one year at Washington for, you know, like it's, I mean, he's it, building the nep the Nepo Kings uh, with <laughs> Brennan Carroll and uh, Steve Belichick. What more do you want? No, Brian? You're right. I'm being, you know, we had, we had Charlie Weiss Jr. for a while, so I don't know yeah. why we shouldn't go back to that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't, I think Florida fans want it to work because it feels like it still potentially could like there have been enough, there have been enough glimmers of, Oh, 
Florida was in this game for X amount of time yeah. or Florida didn't look completely outmatched by this team. The problem is that they are also matched with Florida barely beat USF a couple years ago at home. Yeah. Florida lost to Arkansas at home, a bad Arkansas team that didn't look happy to be playing football anymore, like lost a winnable game there. So lost to Kentucky three times in a row, lost which to Kentucky is insane. Three times in a row. Lost to Vanderbilt. That gets that, was, that, that gets that buried was. in there too. Like I I was I was in Ruby Falls when Florida lost to Vanderbilt. So I I literally emerged from the underground to discover what's when. your 10-second take on Ruby Falls? <laughs> uh it's fine. If if you're claustrophobic, don't go. I'll tell you that right now. If you're even a little bit claustrophobic, don't go into a huge cave under the earth. There were people there who didn't seem to grasp that concept. And I wanted to be like, it does what it says on the tin. Yeah. I don't know what you're mad What did about. you think you were walking into here? Uh, yeah. The laser light show is unexpected as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Is there part of you, too? Like, I wonder if Florida fans, like, could, like I said, I'm, I'm definitely a pr uh, proponent of Dan Mullen. Um, I think he was largely good. I understand the recruiting issues that uh, Florida fans had, but it wasn't as bad. As people made it out to be it was just not urban meyer level and i think yeah. one of the things about florida that's always kind of they're not this it's not quite identical to tennessee but the thing about florida is when you go back to their history as you know it's urban and spurrier mm -hmm. everything else is a disaster Pretty like much. everything yeah. else is just not great elite football like it's just it feels like it's like texas in a way where texas fans see themselves as the same history as oklahoma and and you have to pull them aside and be like no, 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 no. Oklahoma has been really good and had multiple championship windows. Like they're winning a title every decade. They're going mm -hmm. to the college football playoff consistently. They're mm -hmm. putting out Heisman guys every few years, like Hall of Fame coaches. You're not that sustainable, great juggernaut. Like you feel like you are, you have your network, but it's not really been that way year over year. It's kind of a weirdly hard job that you don't understand why it's, they make it so hard, right? So like Florida just makes this way more complicated. Like they're recruiting better than Tennessee still. And you're not even winning games like oh, like it's just people are dot like the recruits are like, just be good and like give us a reason and we'll come. But, like, so, we, a lot of us are here. It's so, so frustrating. Here's the tricky. Uh, your, your analysis is not wrong. And there are plenty of other schools where you can find like UCLA compared to USC. It's like on a football basis. This is entirely lopsided. And the yeah. idea that you think your history is the same is just not accurate. Mm -hmm. But here is the problem. The phenomenon you are describing is exactly the same of Florida's two in-state rivals, Florida State mm. and Miami. These are also schools that for years were nothing. These are not schools that have histories dating back into the 50s and 60s of going to the Rose Bowl and this, that. And like These are new money schools mm. in the terms of college football. And that is who I think occupies the most brain space of florida fans tennessee matters georgia matters uh the sec matters and these aren't sec schools obviously but in terms of who you see and work with and who you are being a dick to online it's florida state and miami fans and because they operate in this same way i think it's less about like we are entitled to this because we have this deep rich history and more we are a Florida school and we are all get get rich schemes that can work. And if they're not mm -hmm. working, we need to try another one. Mm -hmm. I, I just feel like, and I wonder if there's buyer's remorse. I kind of want to do some polling. I want to do some reporting um, in Gainesville of like, what if you could have just talked Dan Mullen into hiring like Pete Golding? Like how yeah. much better would this all be right now? It's like, he really understood offense. He's a top three offensive mind. Those guys are hard to find where Dan yeah. Mullen's just solid. He got Mississippi State to number one overall. Just one of those where it's like, I understand you didn't enjoy the last year there and it got kind of ugly and down the stretch and kind of embarrassing. But like the guy also beat Georgia and whipped Georgia was the last mm -hmm. team in the regular season to whip Georgia yep. uh, with the wheel routes of Kyle Pitts over and over and over again. Yep. Like Dan Mullen, the best version of Dan Mullen was still really, really good. Um, and I just wonder if like that's one of those where both sides are like, we, you we, know, ha we, sh we probably should have just stayed together and figured to me, it out. To me, the trickiest what if about it is that Dan, obviously recruiting was a big reason why yeah. Dan Mullen was But people out. act like it was like he was recruiting like Iowa. Like these are like 13. Sure, sure. Classes. Like they're not great. This is, this is the trickiness of being in the SEC is you can have mm. a top 20 recruiting class and that can be a failure. Yeah. In certain circumstances. But 
to me, the interesting question is all of that happens right before NIL. Yeah. How much does it change how Florida can operate if they're like, look, we don't need you to go into mom's yeah. kitchen and tell her how good this roast is. We just need you to point them in the direction of the money. Yeah. The, le the legal and above board money at this point. Like that's, that's, I think the interesting what if the other thing that like I try to remember, because I think this is true of every college football fan base who's mad about their station. This is true of Spurrier. This is true of Meyer. Your best years always correlate with your competition having down, down stretches. Mm -hmm. Florida is a little bit of an exception with Spurrier because obviously like Florida and Tennessee were going yeah. at it in some really heightened ways, but those are bad Georgia years for the most part. Mm -hmm. Like Georgia is not a relevant player at the national level at that point. When you get to the, the Meyer years, Tennessee is having a terrible time for the most mm -hmm. part. And I think this is true of most places. Like you, there's a zero sum game quality to this and Florida has to, it's less like how can Florida surpass Georgia and how can Florida put itself in a position to take the crown if and when Georgia stumbles, which they eventually will. I don't know how long it's going to be, yeah, but it will happen. At every program we've talked about on this, uh, uh, you know, tonight, however long we've talked about them, has had that point where it's like, oh no, it stopped working, and we yeah. had to figure it out. Um, I like it. We'll end it there. So, final thing, you have a great podcast, Ryan Nanny, um, where you deep dive into different college football fan bases. Calling uh, called We're Not All Like This. You have Indiana, you have Syracuse, you have Kansas, this and the other. So I encourage folks to go check that out. My question to you as we wrap up here tonight, what is, like which one, which fan base were you most surprised to learn about and which one changed your mind the most on how you perceive that fan base now? Um, Gosh, uh, I think Gonzaga was the one that I was most hmm. surprised to learn about just because I really had no big preconceived notions. I had a lot of thoughts about the basketball program, but you might say you had a few thoughts on Gonzaga. <laughs> <laughs> you nice are done, old. nephew. The Chase Thomas podcast. <laughs> Hell yeah.